we're doing today, which is um, <coughs> shells, uh, crabs. Does anyone know who this is? Yeah. It's not mine, but I think yeah. it's adorable. Yeah, that's adorable. Um, if some of you have not been here for um, Crustacean Day, I'm going to call it, um, <laughs> and uh, it's a mixed, a lot of people love it, and That's I hope you do. Thing. Sometimes the shock of uh, fish smell is too much for everyone. Uh, so, you know, go for yourself through whatever you want. Anyway, um, hints about handling things are here, including this wonderful uh, piece by a British artist whose name, again, I've forgotten, but I don't think I'm going to bother. Um, uh, a, you can see there's a shell in here. He did a series. I saw this shell uh, in um, Cape Ann, Gla in Gloucester, the, the museum there. Um, and he just did different things with sort of, I mean, it's very Pat Williams, too, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, these sort of pores and spreads and, and then very specific shell things or it could be, you know, crabs. So I just put that up as another um, interpretation because this is open to all sorts of things. It could be a very realistic crab wait, wait, you know, waiting for dinner. It could be the, you know, summoning up a, 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 a an environment for crabs. Um, so that is that. These Walter Anderson, whom some of you uh, I know because we were here. We went to calendar or something. Well, keeps maybe, but wonderful, weird, unusual, funky. Uh, trouble artist um, from uh, Mississippi, uh, Louisiana. Bio? No, no, no. What? I think he technically, there's a museum to his work now in um, something or other Mississippi, but uh, anyway, Louisiana, that thing, that area. Um, strong, uh, a lot of this is watercolor, some is not. Um, I mean, I think all of these are, but some of his work is not. Um, I just want to bring him up to, it could have been with any kind of class, it wouldn't have to be the shell day at all, but of course this stone crab that he did is just a marvelous uh, personality filled, fill the page, strong, um, big gestures, big washes, texture, so I want to put that in your heads too, along with, you know, these lovely, delicate other kinds of treatments. So, you know, there's a range. Keep, keep that in mind. Wonderful trees, too. Um, everything is animated. Uh, he was uh, possibly, people, some people said he was schizophrenic, but I, I really resist these kind of labels. Um, it's all too familiar to do that to artists, particularly. Um, but he definitely had a different kind of thinking, and everything was very animated. And, um, and he sort of died mysteriously. But anyway. Wonderful painter. Also, interesting color range. She probably picked that up right away. So, put those in your head. Um, we have everything that you might want. Blood oranges, uh, artichokes. You can cut those open, um, or the or the um, in that beautiful thing there. Uh, so, avail yourselves. Make your private setup. You could put it in the middle and do it communally. I. I wanted to leave it to you on the whole, because you might want to just get right up close to something, in one crab or, or a shrimp, or, or, or you might set something up, which is why the tables are there. Um, here on a fairly smooth sheet of, it's a Hanamula paper, which is a, uh, comes in many, many forms. Um, um, this one is fairly, um, on this side anyway, is quite smooth. On the other side, it's quite textured, um, shells, obviously. Um, as always, paper, 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 paper makes so much difference. Because this has all these hills and valleys, you get stuff going with um, almost like a little, I mean, it comes partly it's right up from the paper as you uh, put your brush down. This, where it's less, um, less of a regular texture. Um, you're more the, uh, the terminant. Uh, just the way 
when you work on a hot press, and I have some bristle boards that I thought some people might like to use. Um, uh, you, what you do is, is a greater percentage of the talk back. When it's very, very textured or rough, and I know some of you really are loving rough paper, um, you get a very different kind of thing. So here, these were two, I don't even know what this is. I think it was, is it leaves or shells or rocks? But um, no, whatever, I just, I, did, I put a lot of color down, then some salt, and then some wax paper. Ditto, uh, color, salt, wax paper, and press it. Then I started up here to try to do something um, a little bit like this, with a, a sort of sky, some trees, maybe water, and some rocks going down. So I started it um, doing, and I'm going to just show you what, what I did and continue it. Um, I put a very pale wash, a la, a la this, pale, well, paler here, um, and then put a little salt. <laughs> and left my trunks of trees, and then, oh, cool. um, <laughs> and then here he were. And then with this one, which I did a while ago, I started doing some rocks. So here, I started doing a rock, my pat, um, and put some salt, some wax paper, and pressed it down. Now here's another rock where I did it, and um, you may have to come closer, oh, this is this way. Um, where I had put a little bit of salt, I put a little wash, and I'll, I'm going to do again this so you get the, the general idea. I put a, a bit of, um, actually it's cobalt turquoise, and a little tiny bit of lunar black. I think first I put a drop of, uh, well maybe I only put lunar black. Then folded, fold so it has some lines like that. In other words, you don't just put um, a straight on piece like that, which won't do much. I mean, actually it's going to do something. You, you fold it in some way. You can be folding it and thinking about what you're going to get at the end, but I was not. I was just going to see whatever I get, I'm going to respond to. So then a little bit of salt, put my little paper and put a weight on it. Um, and uh, then check it out. Now, <clears throat> this has been here uh, and has dried. So there you get that. The same approach here, the same approach here. Little bits of paper. Um, it looks as though I probably, I may have had a big piece of paper with lots of small crinkling things and then gone back. And if you're doing a texture with, with rocks and, and um, trying to build it up, after you take off your wax paper and you take off your salt and whatever you have, um, then you go back, and I will show you what I did. Then you can go back and you start adding whatever you might want, like um, <coughs> some lines as though you have a certain kind of a rock or, or whatever it is um, that you're trying to um, duplicate here um, on a, uh, a piece of um, cardboard. Um, the same stuff, creating vegetation behind the trees. <coughs> Your tree last time. I mean, so you get the, um, you know, these marks that are going to come. This is very smooth, so you get some quite interesting things if you have something very smooth here. Okay, one might say, why do that? I can paint it, I'm a painter. I do not need to do that with wax paper or salt or tissue. Uh, I can't find my tissues, but if you happen to have um, tissues as opposed to paper towel, uh, it creates another texture. Um, why do it? Because, to me, anyway, it. It creates something, and I don't do it all the time, but I do it sometimes, and it is a wonderful adjunct. It's fun. Yeah, it's fun, and it's another thing where you have to <coughs> respond to what's there and pick up on something that is given to you, kind of, you know, like working up from a squiggle or something on your paper. <coughs> so it, you know, it'll it'll suggest, and instead of your being 
fixated, I'm going to have exactly this. You're saying, all I'm doing, I'm looking for texture. And when I get what I see there, say here, <coughs> these are trunks, <coughs> and here, it is suggesting some, some kind of a texture that maybe, yes, maybe yes, you could do just with your brush, fine. But this may enter you know, a, a slightly new um, contributor to your painting. This works better when you have a couple, two or three colors. You don't have to be as colorful as this. Look how colorful I am. Yeah. That's <laughs> unusual. Um, so I'm going to put uh, some, you, you could see just as I put that down how slippery this paper is, I think. Um, so I'm going to put a little burnt sienna. I am going to put, uh, I think I, I've already got a rock here. I think I'll pick up a little on that. Um, that so this is uh, manganese and this is cobalt turquoise. And what about a little purple? <coughs> And what was that last thing? Purple, carbazole violet. And um, maybe I'll just put a little, well, I'll put a little of this um, lunar black. I don't know if you have it, you may not have it. Um, but I'm going to put a little, it granulates a lot. If you have uh, colors that granulate, um, they work wonderfully. And because you're getting this random pickup. And then this was waiting a minute. And I'm going to, um, I am going to wait a tiny bit to put a little of the salt. Hello. Uh, a little bit of that uh, because it's just sitting here. It's very, very wet. So that's, I will then put my waxed paper. No matter what you do, you're going to get some kind of an effect. Some here, where this was, uh, the salt was, I waited quite a bit and I, and it was dry for quite a while. Um, you get some wonderful, very clear, funny textured <coughs> lines, uh, this, like this kind of thing. And uh, if you look at some of these examples, you'll, you'll see uh, other things. This, this little star, like the, here, it's quite wet in here. And um, if you if you use salt a lot, you're going to get your own vocabulary with a little bit more salt. So take a look at the um, at the drying. So you know if you, if you want to get proficient at this, um, and I don't claim proficiency, I just claim having fun with it. Um, if you want to get proficient. I think I'll put the brick. <laughs> Actually, no, I think that's too heavy. Uh, this, there's a diff disadvantage to doing this. Um, the point of the wax paper and the folding, um, and why you don't just put it like this, is that, and this is, goes back to why this is, I think, too heavy. Uh, you are creating vacuums and pressures, vacuum and pressure, and parts of it have lines will make, create lines, I should say. And if you look at some of these, you know, you get some lines like right. this. This, then I came back. Or I did a big rock. rock and um, then you came in and, and then it. with different colors. The whole thing about using these textured things or anything is that then you get the contrast set up right. from around, either from I mean, somebody must, I don't know who, Ernan must have come in with this, because I don't usually have something, one of these metallics. Um, but you get your form of the rock by, I mean, yeah. and obviously I didn't finish this, but you get these vegetations yeah. of whatever, uh, tr leaves, um, just the way here you get the, um, by leaving the trunks, yeah, and the, you get the forest, and then this takes on a meaning right. because of what is around it, right. and that is almost the single most thing about all yeah. painting. Um, it's what is around it, what defines it, where you get an edge or lose it, okay. and so there you are. Um, here's some more. Um, again, see these would have been the, the vacuums of the folding. If I can use that word, I mean, that's not very technically correct. 
Um, and then with that one uh, that you've got there, let me let me just show oh, one, <coughs> one thing in here. Uh, then I came back, and I could hear too, and or you can do this when you crack. Um, I came back with a little line work um, to emphasize when when it has suggested itself to me. That's why I like it to be it suggests to me, and then I say, okay, I'm going to pick up uh, the shape of it.